nice to be here. When we came in, they were playing Take a Walk on the Wild Side. I like that music choice a lot. So Hamlet Biopharma is an innovative company that I actually was part of starting. I'm not the CEO, I'm the founder and chairman of the company. Uh, Hamlet Biopharma is a highly innovative uh, company that, and I don't have this thing, here we go. Um, working with two indications, cancer and infections. We have a broad pipeline of more than 15 projects, 60 patents, and we are focusing on, on three projects that are in phase two trials. Alpha-1H for bladder cancer and an AL1 receptor antagonist that we are testing for bladder pain and for recurrent acute cystitis. Our way of working is to define mechanisms of infection, precise mechanisms of infection, and to decide drugs that interfere with those mechanisms. And we have our scientific identity, we have our scientific lab ongoing and in symbiosis with the drug development platform that we have developed. And the success of that, as I said, is shown by these three projects that are in clinical trials and by a rich pipeline of very interesting molecules. So recently, Hamlet Biopharma completed a successful financing round. We raised about four, almost 50 million through a rights issue. And we are really proud that this was completed without warranties and without convertibles. So due to crucial backing from our long-term shareholders and the addition of a large number of new shareholders, we were actually able to get the money. Wow. And then the market's positive response following the rice issue is also something that we are, of course, extremely happy about. So the company is visible, what our work is visible, and hopefully we can reach the goals that we have set out to reach. So for bladder cancer, the key, the key molecule, alpha-1H, is a molecule that kills tumor cells very quickly. We published uh, last fall a combined study of patients with bladder cancer, the two populations, and calculated the combined treatment results. We have also done a dose escalation study, which means that we have different, we have two concentrations, and the response rate was 82% of the tumors treated with a higher dose and 45% of tumors treated with a lower dose, which of course is, is our very good numbers for bladder cancer. So we also have received uh, very good news from the FDA. Our IND was granted last summer. And in November, we received fast track status from the FDA. And for a small company, this is, uh, this is a big event. We have been collaborating with a partner in the US who are the spokespersons with the FDA for several years. And by systematically following the advice, we have been able to, to place our portfolio qualitatively and quantitatively in such a position that this is now possible. And we are proceeding towards phase three trials in dialogue with the FDA. So the clinical studies in summary for bladder cancer, we've completed a placebo control study and a dose escalation study, as I said, and we have an ongoing study to, to examine more details about the, the future phase three trial protocol. The, the results are, are no drug-related safety issues, which I think is very unusual for a cancer compound. And as I said, the comp combined data analysis and the numbers. The top panel here shows you the increase in effect with increasing dose, uh, the reduction in tumor size. I think you can appreciate the uptake. The red color here is the uptake of drug by the tumor. It targets the tumor very efficiently. And the green color here is apoptosis, which means that the tumor cells in the treated patients are dying by apoptosis. As you know, this is a non-toxic form of cell death and we're very interested in this mechanism. We've also added news recently about another mechanism of the anti-tumor effect of alpha-1H, and this is the immune response. So there is a rapid and effective immune response to the tumor in patients treated with alpha-1H. 
So in addition to killing tumor cells and inducing tumor cell shedding, alpha-1 also activates a broad immune response with a strong protective potential against the cancer. Another aspect of this response, which is quite interesting, is that it resembles BCG. BCG are mycobacteria. They are the drug of choice for bladder cancer. You inject them into the bladder of the patient and the immune response builds up and the immune response rejects the tumor. So this is something that the, the field is used to, the urology field is used to treating with BCG. Now, if we compare the immune response to our, in, to our compound and BCG from literature studies, you can see this huge overlap. All of these cytokines, all of these immune response parameters are regulated both by our drug and by BCG. And there are some additional cytokines that are regulated by the higher dose of our drug. Comparing the pattern here of activation, our activation pattern, very, very significant values compared to placebo. All of this is compared to placebo. And then the literature studies of BCG, you can see the great symmetry between those two. And of course, that's very interesting because it suggests that our non-toxic compound is able to mimic many of the aspects of BCG, which has a lot of side effects associated with it. I would also like to mention a little bit about our studies in the infection and immune immunomodulation field. We all know that antibiotics are, are not as efficient as they should be, and that other, other approaches are needed. There are lots of attempts to make more antibiotics, but that not, that's not our approach. Our approach is to use the immune system of the host, to strengthen it in such a way that it can get rid of the infection, and at the same time have less inflammation. Sounds impossible, but actually it works. So. I mentioned before that we are working with the IL-1 receptor antagonist to do immunotherapy in two indications. One is bladder pain syndrome, and the other is recurrent acute cystitis. So bladder pain syndrome is a relatively rare, but affecting about 0.1% of the global population. This disease causes severe chronic lower urinary tract symptoms. The, the patients are kept awake at night. It's difficult for them to hold a job or to have a family life. There are no treatments available long term. Morphine is the gold standard or to remove the bladder by surgery. So this is, this is a very special group of, of individuals with a very difficult handicap. Of course, acute cystitis is the opposite. This is what every other woman has at least once in her life. And many women have recurrent cases of these infections. There is really no good alternative to antibiotics. So I'd like to show you some data for the, the, the bladder pain study, the phase two study that we are now conducting. The data is from an earlier publication, but I think it illustrates our point. So we see a reduced pain score in those patients. We see an increased quality of life. So, and we also see a reduction in pain molecules. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we have objective measures, molecular measures, that indicate the response of the patient to treatment and the reduction of pain that actually could serve as potential biomarkers in the future. And significant effects of this treatment were, were detected in the majority of patients. So the phase two study is ongoing and we are very optimistic about these outcomes. There is also the question about antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. I'm not showing you mouse data because the clinical data... Oops. Oh, no, I'm not. I apologize for that. So in summary, successful round of financing that we are very proud of. New clinical data for two indications, bladder cancer and bladder pain syndrome. We have also landed a large-scale drug production contract. We are now in the kilogram range in terms of GMP drug production, continuing the FDA process. We are looking at strategic alliances and commercial collaborations very actively. And also we have increased our activity with investor relations and media presence. I think this is, this is one of the reasons why we were successful with the funding round. And we have a rich pipeline of discoveries. And I'll just show you some examples here. 
Of course, there are other indications for alpha-1 and for Hamlet, brain tumors, colon and rectal cancer, oral cancer. These are indications that we are looking at, uh, but not actively in clinical phase. We also work with a molecule that's very interesting. It's called an RNA pol 2 inhibitor. It doesn't say anything, doesn't tell you anything. Think of the microbiome. Think of nice bacteria producing good things for the body. We've looked at that a long time ago. Now we're at the stage when we can actually purify molecules from these nice bacteria and use them as drugs. And the effects in animal models are amazing. We also have competence, some of it in our room, where we actually can see the mechanism exactly in a close lock and key situation, where we can say exactly how this works. So I'm really looking forward to the continued development of this group of, of molecules. And we have additional projects in the pipeline. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Katarina, for your presentation. Very thank good presentation. Thank you. It's fun to talk about things that go well. <laughs> Um, I'm curious, why did you, why, is, why, would, why was bladder cancer chosen as the first indication for your lead candidate? That's really interesting and it's important to mention, it's a name that I should have mentioned anyway, a urologist Björn Wult, who uh, he was, he's been working with the lab scientifically, got his PhD with us and so on. And when, when he saw the data on acute cystitis in the animal model, mm. he was thinking about which patient group should we choose, you know, always this question, which is the right patient group. Mm. And he thought of those who had the worst situation. Mm -hmm. Why don't we start with those? And it turned out that his, his judgment was perfect. So that's, that's, his, that's due to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is the US your primary focus? Why or why not? <laughs> the FDA was our primary focus. This has been almost like a fixed idea for us that we are, we've been very cheap. We've come all this way with quite little money and part of that I think is because we are trying to be strategic. Mm -hmm. So for me uh, there was a need of a third party out there to tell us what to do mm -hmm. instead of us trying to second guess. So, so this FDA contact has been, been part of that. It doesn't mean that we have funding to do clinical trials in the US, not at this point, but of, of course a, a good dialogue with the FDA might, might enable that in the future. Mm -hmm. What is your exit strategy? How do you plan to achieve it? Well, what we say and what we believe is that we would like a partner that has the muscles and competence to take this on. We are very happy to discuss our investors and their exits because it's close to our heart. But our strategy is to, to keep the drug going and to get it as far as possible towards the market. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, shifting towards the um, immunotherapy. Yes. Um, is immunotherapy becoming the new standard for combating bacterial infections and antibiotic resistance, or, or should it become the new standard? I wish. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we've been working with this for, for a while, mm -hmm. and, and there are very elegant studies by, by co-workers and, uh, in the lab who have published in excellent journals, really showing how strong these effects are. And I mean, we are, they are very motivated to take this on. Um, it's sort of a, a non-conventional thing in that most of you believe that if you inhibit the immune response, you get more sick, right? So people who have many infections, they usually have some deficiency of the immune response. What we're looking at is the overreactivity of the immune system. And I think after COVID, you all understand that, right? You get too sick. You get sick because you have too much immunity. And this is the one that we put in the lid on, not the one that you need for your, for your normal defense. I really believe this in this. I wish there was more activity in, in, in this field, really. Mm. And final question. Yeah. As founder of the company, Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what was your vision when you founded the company? And would you say you've reached that vision? Yeah, first of all, everything is many people. But, and the reason we founded the company was because we realized that a piece of human milk was killing tumor cells. Mm -hmm. And there were several people involved from the start. I think, I was thinking that if we just get to the point where we have something from the FDA, mm -hmm. 
then we will be credible, you know? Then the rest of the development will go by itself. And there is a lot of attention around us at the moment, so we will see if we were right. But ah, we made it <laughs> so far. I think that's, that's fun. That's, that's great. That's great, well, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Thank Katarina. you, and thanks for your nice questions. <laughs> Appreciate it.